as many people may be aware, my family has uh, some strong roots in Timmins. We've been in the community since 1904 and in business since 1910. And over that time period, I'm, I'm really proud of, of, of the reputation and the commitment that my family has shown through you know, many good years and also some challenging years. How I got to South Porcupine, that, that, that's a great question. Uh, I met my now wife uh, about nine years ago, and she's a lifelong resident of Porcupine and South Porcupine, and immediately I just fell in love with that community, the camaraderie, uh, the people. We have many friends there. Uh, my daughter who was born two years ago to school in South Porcupine and I just really love the community. I find it's a real gem of the area and I felt I wanted to run in a community where, where I live. And I think one of the, the primary issues is population. Um, we've been suffering a decline in population for many years and I think a lot of that has to do with potentially the affordability in living in this region. We pay some of the highest gasoline prices, we pay some of the highest elect electricity rates, and of course a hot button item right now are property taxes. Um, and I can really relate to a lot of residents and business owners because I'm facing very high property taxes, taxes that have spiraled in my mind out of control. And I think one of the main uh, areas of my platform is to restore some fairness to the tax system. Uh, I've been doing some research lately. And I came across a document that's illustrating that over 65% of the tax revenue is absorbed by homeowners. That's a tremendous burden on, on families. And another 30%, nearly 30%, is absorbed by commercial businesses, many of them privately owned or owned by families. Uh, I think that's something that we have to look at working with our provincial partners, working with city council, administration, uh, working with our stakeholders to see how that can become more equitable. So it is a major part of my platform, if you, if you want to call it that. Uh, we need to retain our youth and give them reasons to remain in Timmins or to come back to Timmins, and specifically people who are already residing here. Um, I can relate to that. I, I was raised in Timmins. I was born in Timmins. I received an exceptional education in Timmins. I received an exceptional experience in my recreational activity with great coaches, great hockey leagues, soccer leagues, baseball leagues. I went away to university in Toronto and then law school in Toronto. But I came back to Timmins. Um, because I had that dedication and commitment and I really believed in the community. Right now there seems to be a bit of a disconnect where many young people do not see opportunity. Um, whether I'm elected or not elected, I am really going to advocate on behalf of incentivizing young people, people to remain in Timmins, to attend our, our wonderful institutions like College Boreal, University of Hearst, Northern College, or even young people who are going away to college, to trade schools, to universities. We have to give them a reason and a bit of an incentive to come back, especially ones who grew up in Timmins, the ones who have committed to stay in Timmins. Uh, potentially some of those incentives could include some abatement on the first homes they buy or incentives to employers who hire uh, local graduates. I, I think that is really, really key. Timmins should be the benchmark. Timmins should get out in front of this issue and show the community, show the province, show the country that Northern Ontario is a great place for young people to work, to raise families, to enjoy a, a quality lifestyle. and. I think we can do it, but we're going to have to take steps um, and offer real real incentives to, to those local residents. I don't think it's a right to be a councillor. It's certainly not a right to work for this community. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve the stakeholders, and I really think we have to change the culture and the attitude somewhat uh, to, to ensure that happens. Uh, one of the major parts of my platform is putting people first. 
and I think it's high time now that this community starts taking care of the people who have taken care of it, the men and women who have chosen to reside in Timmins, to own a home in Timmins, to raise their families in Timmins, enroll their children in school and recreational activities in Timmins, to support local businesses and spend their money in Timmins, and support local initiatives and volunteer their time, and especially paying their property taxes. We can't lose sight that those are the important people. As a lifelong resident of Timmins, I have utilized the Sportsplex swimming pool for 28 years. I've been swimming there since 1990. And I happen to think it's a great facility. Uh, Amanda and her team are so engaged, they're so helpful. Uh, they create a wonderful atmosphere. I've made many dear friends at the Sportsplex. Uh, every day that I go swimming, I see many seniors men and women enjoying their time there. It's their social nourishment. It's their activity. They're enjoying it. And while I understand there's a desire to build something new, I think we have to really start looking, Andrew, at supporting the great facilities we do have in Timmins. The McIntyre Arena, the Barn in South Porcupine. These are jewels of the community. The Porcupine Ski Runners, um, Kamaskosha Ski Hill. You know, you talk about they form the fabric of this community. I understand people want these new facilities. And I saw the rendering of the facility and it looks gorgeous. There's no question. But I, I use this analogy quite often, Andrew. I don't think there's parents in the world that wouldn't want to bring their kids to Disney World. That is the pinnacle. But they may look at a vacation in Disney World as being quite excessive. It could be $10,000, $12,000. I don't think there's anything wrong if parents suggested to their kids, could we go to Canada's Wonderland? It's an amusement park, it has great rides, it has great facilities, music, concessions. It may not be Disney World, but I think kids would have a heck of a good time down there and it would accomplish that goal of exposing your children to a, to a fun vacation. So I think we have to prioritize and uh, live within our means and support what we have. Well again, I think I mentioned earlier that I was astonished at the level of taxes being paid by homeowners. It is now getting to the point where we're all aware that many seniors can't remain in their homes. Uh, many families are considering moving away from Timmins. I've been told by many realtors that today the first question asked about a home or the purchase of a home is not the price of the home, but what are the property taxes? That has to change. Now, is there one simple answer? I don't think there is. Except, as I said earlier, we need to restore some fairness to the tax system, where the whole entire burden can't be borne by families. Um, I, I, I think we have to seriously look at that with other stakeholders, um, that everyone is paying their fair share. We have some very uh, positive and powerful industrial players in the community and we all want them to be immensely successful because in return I think the community will be successful. So of course we're rooting for their success and I think there is opportunity with all the many resources we have here in forestry and mining that we could become one of the wealthiest communities in the country. And so we have to look at that to see what's reasonable, to see what's fair, and to sit down. And there should be no shame in saying, how can you succeed in industry, and how, in turn, can the community succeed? Of course, we have to increase revenue. And I think there are, are areas where we could look at increasing revenues. There's some great projects on the horizon, whether it's the Ring of Fire, whether it's the Century Project. Perhaps there are other projects coming down the road so that we can become more diversified. Retention of the population is key to keep the tax base up. The more people you have, the more funding you receive from the province, from other governments. But we have to look ourselves. We can't just look to government and politicians to fix what ails us. We have to believe as a community that we can be successful. We will be successful and we will continue to fight until we are successful. I see one area of opportunity 
in reaching out to many of our Indigenous partners, our Indigenous friends and neighbours and those communities. These are emerging markets. These are emerging communities. There's a population base that looks to Timmins as a regional centre. And I think there will be economic opportunities. I think there will be educational opportunities, healthcare opportunities, labour opportunities. There's a skilled labour force in many of these communities that's looking for an opportunity to gain employment. What do I hear in my business? No one can find tradespeople, skilled tradespeople, qualified tradespeople. And I think the answer, Andrew, is right in front of us. And I'm hoping that council and administration reach out to our neighbours and our friends in these Indigenous communities and stand unified and together to explore the opportunities that are before us. I, I think South Porcupine, the entire East Dam, is the gem of this community. Uh, the warmth of the people, uh, the camaraderie, the support they lend to each other and to businesses. I think what I'd want to do is really, uh, although we're there to represent the entire community, and again, standing together is better than being divided, but my loyalties will be to the East End, and I will definitely be out uh, seeking any type of business opportunities based on what I just said, the type of support. I think there's an incredible opportunity for professionals, lawyers, doctors, physio, uh, insurance uh, uh, agents, brokers, financial advisors. There is a captive market in, in the East End. And I want to kind of table the opportunity that exists and the support that they will receive to get as many individuals and businesses to look at the opportunity that exists. It's going to be a challenge, without question, because we need more people overall in the community. But again, uh, I'm going to be out advocating zealously on the opportunity that exists in the East End based on the loyalty that I've seen there the last nine years. I don't like to beat a dead horse, but I can honestly tell you that top of mind in my business, because you've asked me in my business, has been the tax levy. Uh, it has been excessive. It has prevented many businesses, mine included, to do more marketing, to hire more people, uh, to bring in more inventory, to help with those uh, type of key aspects to grow your business. The environment is challenging with the taxes because you have to do so much more in sales to meet your property tax obligations. We have to become more user friendly as a community. As I said earlier, it's a privilege to work for this city, whether you're a councillor, whether you're in administration. And sometimes some people are getting the impression that, you know, administration or city hall is doing the constituents a favor. It's quite the other way around. We're doing them the favor and we have to be treated accordingly. And there should be a real push to work with constituents, to work with businesses or homeowners or charities or whatever the case is, to work to find success together. We need to work together to find solutions. It's always easy to say no. But if you're always saying no, there will be no growth, there will be no progress. And I think that can be done, Andrew, in a responsible manner. I'm not saying to allow reckless development or reckless building, but I think common sense has to inject itself into the equation when businesses and, and residents are working with the community as opposed to this positional type of entrenchment that, that I've seen and heard uh, with myself and many of my colleagues. We can't just depend, whether it's police services or teachers or government, we have to kind of come together as a community. And I know while I was younger, and my wife Anna brought this up to me, and I think it's a tremendous uh, idea. We used to have neighborhood watches. And those are people just looking out for each other. We're looking out for each other. If we can provide some additional support uh, to the police services, I think having a neighborhood watch, I think you know, keeping an eye out uh, for these criminals or alleged criminals, I think would, would act as a great deterrent. 
and you know we have to take some responsibility ourselves because you know the number of crimes and so on that are taking place would be overwhelming even if we brought in an army uh, uh, of people so uh, I know it's a concern but I think you know the good people in society we have to band together and I think neighborhood watch working alongside with police services because I'm certainly not advocating vigilante uh, type of conduct but I think you know let's let's watch out for one another and if it's the petty crimes I think it would act as a great deterrent if we could bring back uh, neighborhood watch uh, I understand why people enjoy the social aspect of what the city put on and it was a lot of hard work and I think they did a great job that being said I don't believe concerts necessarily are the place that the city should uh, be engaged uh, that's my opinion just as I would love to have an outdoor hockey game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens I would love it I would probably pay any amount of money to see that but if it was subjecting the city to multi-million dollars worth of loss I just don't think it's appropriate uh, to be in there I think there's many other aspects we could look at to enhance the social nourishment I would be willing to consider that uh, it's not just dollars and cents I know you know there's a price to pay to live as I said earlier in an enjoyable community uh, and we would have to look very carefully at that but you ask me a straight question I'll give you a straight answer I just don't feel it's the place uh, for municipal government to be involved I think that's better left for concert promoters I, I'm quite concerned um, with the decline in enrollment in, in the schools in Timmins. Um, I think healthcare and education are the two fundamentals, the two paradigms of any good society, at least any society in which I want to reside. Uh, we have such a tremendous uh, core of teachers and, and school boards, but we're seeing this drastic decline. We're seeing it in the classrooms and I think we really need to sit down and uh, consult with the school boards. I understand it's a provincial mandate. I get that. But I think there's a lot we could do as a community in speaking with the school boards and speaking with teachers to see what we can do. Whatever I've achieved in, in my life, I, I owe that to my parents first. But a very close second is the education I received in Timmins, the teachers that I had. Um, and I want to ensure that continues for uh, many generations to come. Well, I was born and, and, and raised in Timmins. Um, my dad, Morris, and my mother, Eleanor. And as I said, we have a rich, the Feldman family has a rich history in Timmins, a long commitment. I'm a fourth generation Feldman to be at the helm of Feldman Timber. And, and that means so much to me. Even when there's challenging times and it's been difficult, uh, I learned from my family that you know, you don't shy away and you don't run away from turbulence or tough times. You stick it out and, and that's probably uh, where I'm proudest to be part of that, that Feldman legacy and I'd like to see it continue for my, for my daughter Maisie. I just feel I really care about the community. As I said earlier, uh, Andrew, there's been some difficult times in our business, but we've stuck it out. Unlike many other even bigger businesses who have decided not to remain in Timmins, uh, Timmins is in my blood, uh, and I want to see it succeed, and I know it's the greatest place around, and rather than sit back and maybe sound like I'm being critical, I want to make a difference. I want to listen to, to people who know a lot more than I do, and just kind of be their voice, and be their representative. But I think there's always room for improvement, and I think we can get to the next level. And I just feel if I didn't do this, I'd probably regret not stepping in and uh, trying to make a difference. I think everyone's aware in the community, but especially in the East End, uh, what's happening at Porcupine Lake. Um, that has to change. And again, I don't have one solution, but it's just completely unacceptable. Uh, I can speak from those terms, I own property on the lake, I've been unable to develop it because I'm, I'm concerned. Um, and it's something, I know the city is working hard to remediate it, uh, but I'll be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm upset that it's gone on for so many years. You know, let's be clear, this is something that's been inherited 
inherited by the current council and administration. Uh, these evils have existed, I think, for decades. I want to know why, and I want to, I want to get this fixed. And it's not going to be an easy fix, but it pains me and hurts me and really upsets me that a tremendous lake where so many people grew up and enjoyed that, kids, adults, can't even go in that lake. It should really raise the attention of everyone in this community and across the province because in this day and age it is unheard of to have that type of sewage and that type of issue existing in an area like Timmins. I think one area where we have to address and have uh, some collaborative conversations is with industry. We have some of the um, best and most powerful industries around the world, whether it's in forestry, whether it's in, in mining, and we want these industries to succeed. We want them to remain in Timmins. At the same time, the community has to be able to participate in this success. And I think there are models out there that could help alleviate some of the burden we're facing with our infrastructure costs, our property taxes. I'm looking forward to getting out and meeting um, everyone in, in South Porcupine and hearing many of the ideas and solutions that they have, because I just think we have a lot of talented, smart, capable people in South Porcupine, and I'm just looking, you know, you give me the recommendations and I'll be out there fighting for you. I really believe that uh, together and with the support of everyone in the community in South Porcupine that we're going to make a difference and we're going to make Timmins the best place it can be.